Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. Good evening. First tonight, a third victim of the Hillcrest Primary School tragedy has been given an emotional farewell. Peter Dot is being remembered by his loved ones as a firecracker who made them laugh. A young man full of life and only beginning his journey. That was Peter Dot, who was today laid to rest by family and friends after losing his life in the Hillcrest Primary Jumping Castle tragedy. The type of boy that you always found yourself laughing at, but also shaking your head at the same time. His cousin Jai spoke on behalf of the family today, a family that Peter had loved and lifted with his presence, remembering his love of gaming and his love of the outdoors. Peter and his family were always close. They spent whatever time they could away camping, spending time together and exploring the countryside. Thanking first responders for their efforts. They're the real heroes. Without these heroes, my uncle would not have had the chance to say goodbye to Peter and give him a final kiss. Hillcrest Primary is a school community deep in mourning. Six pupils dying after the December 16 incident, when a gust of wind picked up a jumping castle and threw children from a height of 10 metres. Peter is the third to be farewelled. By the end, like anyone that's ever taught Peter will tell you, we couldn't help but love him. His year six teacher also spoke today of a sometimes mischievous little boy who won over everyone with his kindness, humour and love of learning. Peter, you're a firecracker of a kid and your spark will forever live on in our hearts. Hearts now broken for little Peter. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. A man has sustained extensive injuries after falling around 15 metres while climbing at Cape Hoy on the Tasman Peninsula. Search and rescue undertook the challenging rescue from a small ledge at around 7.30 last night, winching the man and his climbing partner to safety. The pair was flown to the Royal Hobart Hospital. A Trevallon man has been charged with armed robbery after a two-month-long investigation by Tasmania Police. It's alleged the 27-year-old robbed a BP service station at Youngtown on October 4. He's set to appear before the Launceston Magistrates Court at a later date. Police are once again appealing to the public for information as investigations continue into a deliberately lit Christmas Eve blaze at the Peacock Centre. Authorities are searching for two potential suspects and are asking businesses and residents in the area to check their CCTV around the time of the fire. The two men are described as being between 19 and 20 years old, slim builds and around 172 centimetres tall. Anyone with information should contact Crime Stoppers. And a worker at St Anne's Aged Care Facility in Hobart has tested positive for COVID-19. The facility has been placed into lockdown and residents and workers are now being tested. 55 new cases have been recorded in Tasmania, recording the total number of active cases to 300. With Party in the Apocalypse now listed as a low-risk exposure site. A former employee of Hobart's Brunswick Hotel has risen from the ashes, launching his new business at the Taste of Summer Festival. The event proving a huge success with ticket sales exceeding expectations despite COVID restrictions. When the Brunswick Hotel went up in flames, so too did Ewan Davies' career until he launched his new business at The Taste. It was a bit of a change of pace, um, going from full-time work and like pretty regular hours and a really good like knit team of people to suddenly being like solely operational uh, with just myself. Putting his bartending skills to good use, creating his own range of beverages. It's really fun to see people drinking like the products I've worked on. Um, and see people enjoying it. So yeah, a bit of a life changer. His business one of many trying to stay afloat in the midst of COVID. I'm very worried the last few weeks sitting at home. is like, is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? But so far we're lucky and um, fingers crossed that everything stays like it is and we can finish the event off. Smaller menus, a key theme for producers this year to avoid long lines. The short menus are fast for customers to read and they also mean that the producer can really focus on what they're good at. Online queues also set up to keep crowds at bay. 
Despite COVID hampering the event, ticket sales have exceeded expectations, proving the taste is just as popular as ever. We sold over 7,000 tickets yesterday, and given it's a Tuesday and day one, which is normally the, the quietest day, we're expecting days two and three to build into what will be a great New Year's Eve party. The festival continues tomorrow. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmania News. And it's not just the Sydney Hobart proving a crowd pleaser. Two other yacht races have also put on a show. The Jones family steering advantage to a line honours victory in the Launceston to Hobart, while Vertigo achieved a rarity in the Rudder Cup, winning line honours and handicap titles in the race from Melbourne to Devonport. Sailing into victory, advantage slipped in front of Fork in the Road to claim line honours. Yeah, overwhelmed, overwhelmed. Overcoming a damaged mast just weeks earlier to compete in the Launceston to Hobart. Now it's been a mad dash to try and get one from Sydney and here and put in and yeah, and clean the boat up because it was a bit of damage as well. So yeah. Each entrant battling the currents of Bass Strait, all vying to make it into Hobart to be greeted by waiting fans. There were 24 boats that started. Um, two have retired. Um, they're all okay, but um, they had other commitments. Um, started at 9:30 on the 27th of December. Um, 285 nautical miles. It was in Devonport the family crew aboard Vertigo celebrated a win in the Melbourne to Devonport event. It was a small fleet this year but you know, a win's a win and we'll take that home, no problem there. Taking out line honours and handicap to claim the 114th Rudder Cup. Very rare, I mean that we're a, our club's all about who wins on handicap rather than who wins line honours but you know, I was talking to Tim before the owner and he uh, last had a go at this 23 years ago so he's managed to get there this year. Among the four boats in this year's race was Brian Pattinson and his son aboard Gusto, <laughs> placing second, eventually making it into the Mersey after rough winds hampered their efforts. You're, you're on your toes the whole race. You're, you're just trying to find wind. Everything was trying to find something to get, to, get, uh, to get out of what the mess you're in. Teams each celebrating a successful finish before returning home. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmania News. Runners and cyclists are in action tonight in Devonport as the Christmas carnivals continue. Our reporter Josh Duggan joins us live now from Devonport Oval. Josh, there's been a big draw card for fans tonight. There is, Louise. Those coming down here tonight will be lucky enough to see a Tasmanian Olympian in action. Stuart McSwain is here. He's running the mile and he's been kind enough to give us, give us a bit of his time before his race tonight. Thanks for joining us, Stuart. What do you love about racing in the Tasmanian Christmas carnivals? Um, it's definitely the chance for me to get back and race. I felt the Tasmanian support over in Tokyo, so to get out here in Devonport and burn in two nights' time um, is an experience that I, I enjoy and I've used it to kickstart my season the last couple of years. And how does this fit in your major goals for next season? Yeah, so obviously we've got Commonwealth Games and World Champs next year, so they're the big goals for next year. Um, and I'll use this as a kind of a tester to see where my fitness is, have some hard races to see, see where I'm at and kind of use it as momentum building towards those Commonwealth Games and World Champs next season. Thanks, mate. Best of luck tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. And there's still time for punters to get down here to see all the action. The men's and the women's gift and the wheel races will both be held around 8 o'clock tonight. And we'll have all the highlights and the results, including, including Stuart's run, tomorrow night. Louise. It wasn't meant to be like this. That's the thought that struck Rebecca White as she watched her troubled party from the sidelines after stepping down from the top job. In the second of our series of special interviews with Tasmania's political leaders, Meg Side sits down with the returned Labor leader to discuss one of the most challenging years of her political career. It's a year many will be happy to forget. For Rebecca White, 2021 has been a roller coaster. Her party defeated at the ballot box and battling endless infighting. But it was also a year of personal highs. Personally, having a baby and welcoming Hudson into the world's definitely been the highlight. But even then, it's had its challenges. Campaigning in your third trimester isn't ideal and it did have an impact on my baby and um, on the growth of my child. And that's something that I had to manage very carefully because the expectation is you get out and you campaign hard every single day and I did that. Um, but the fact that Peter Gutwin called an election when I was so heavily pregnant is not something that I'll forget in, a, in the short term. The first two weeks of that campaign, the most challenging. Factional feuds resulting in the snubbing of Dean Winter as a candidate. 
I think the party has made a fatal error. Overturned by Rebecca White shortly after. All I want to do is serve the people of Franklin. Had we had more time, I have no doubt we would have been able to resolve those matters in a way that was in a more ordinary fashion and the Tasmanian community would have just been unaware. The problems continuing over the following weeks. Former Labor President Ben McGregor forced to resign his candidacy amid harassment allegations, a matter now before the courts. And then a secret pro pokies deal with the Hospitality Association leaked to the media. But by the final two weeks of the campaign, things started to look up. Momentum has been with Labor, particularly in the latter part of this campaign. Ultimately, though, it was another loss for the party. What was going through your head on the night of the election? It's a little way back Yeah, now. it is, but it's still that. very clear. <laughs> to reflect on that time, I think... Um, we knew that we were up against it. Rebecca White stepping down as leader shortly after. A battle for the top job ensued, with David O'Byrne ultimately victorious. But it was short-lived. Faced with sexual harassment allegations, his time at the position lasted just two weeks. I will be standing aside as opposition leader today. Remaining in Parliament despite being asked to resign. Uh, there's no doubt that during that particular period when the leadership changes were occurring, um, there were many of us who were watching on because I was on maternity leave at that time and thinking um, that it wasn't meant to be like this. Rebecca White taking back her job. With the support of my colleagues to lead us to the next election. Suffering another blow shortly after with the resignation of Bastian Seidel, labelling the culture in the party as toxic. The nastiness is just terrible and it's got to stop. He is right to say that it has to stop. There had become a culture that was a really unfortunate and unacceptable. And I have said repeatedly since then that we need to change the culture of the party. A process now well underway. Of course, the federal election is the next thing that we need to devote our energy and resources to, but it's also the rebuilding of the party. Meg Sides, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmanian boat Sidewinder remains in the lead in the Sydney Hobart's two-handed category, now near Eddiston Point, while Lord Jiminy has passed Strawn and remains in the lead in the Melbourne to Hobart yacht race. Today, Advantage claimed line honours in the Launceston to Hobart, while Vertigo achieved a rare double, winning the line honours and handicap races in the Melbourne to Devonport. It's been a hard day on the tools for those vying for a state woodchopping title. The inaugural Exeter Woodchopping Carnival, the first in a series of chops being held over the next nine days. The event also featuring two memorial handicap competitions, honouring a local couple who dedicated their lives to their sport. My mother and father-in-law, Tony and Kath Beams, passed away and um, our sons wanted to have memorials in their honour, so we've done that today. Dale Beams took out the state title, while Stephen Foster and Darren Steers won the A and B grade memorial divisions, respectively. Good evening. 24 in Launceston today, Hobart and Burnie 21 and 19 in Devonport. 28 was the state's top across Ouse and Bushy Park, drawn 18 and 25 in Smithton. On the close-up shows low cloud about the southwest and parts of the west coast. Further out, areas of cloud is seen about the north and east of the mainland, while thunderstorms lie over WA and South Australia. Tomorrow shows the high northeast of Tasmania strengthening as the high to the west weakens. Northwest to southwesterly winds tomorrow 10 to 20 knots swells up to 3 metres in the west and south and below 1 metre in the north. A strong wind warning is current for the upper east coast, south east coast and southwest coast. Tomorrow's forecast now 25 and partly cloudy across Hobart and Signet, New Norfolk 28. In the north, Launceston 28, Devonport and Campbelltown partly cloudy. Burnie and Strawn tomorrow partly cloudy 23 in Smithton. St Helens 27, Swansea partly cloudy and 29 in Fingal. The UV forecast is reaching extreme 12s across the state. 
Looking ahead to the three-day forecast now, Friday, fine and warm across the state for New Year's Eve. Saturday, fine until showers develop about the west, south, east and central areas. And Sunday, showers clearing from the west during the afternoon. Capital cities, 31 and mostly sunny in Perth tomorrow. Brisbane, partly cloudy and 33 in Melbourne. And currently Hobart, mostly sunny in 18, Launceston 22, Devonport, mostly sunny in 19. That's all in Weatherloo. All right, thanks for that, Jackie. And that's all your news for now. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night.